And good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. You're listening to the program You and I on PSA, exclusively on the Street 91.9 FM, and it's hosted by the Public Services Association. We are here Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. You're here with me today with Sister Dawn and uh, Comrade Murray. Good morning, listeners. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. We'd like to remind you that it is, uh, we want to say a special good morning to the hardworking public officers who are tuned in to the program, PSA or PSA members, the General Council, and of course the Joint Consultative Committee staff side members. Good morning to all the PSA executive officers and staff members. This morning's program, as usual, is geared towards highlighting the concerns of public officers and the restoration of the respect and status of the public service. To halt, even reverse, the systematic dismantling of the public service that is currently taking place. It is an interactive program and we invite you to call in and contribute to the discussion using the following telephone numbers 622-9154-622-3303-631-0219 in Tobago 639-0791 We would like to hear from you on the issues you would like us to discuss you can further contact us via our official Facebook page PSA Trinbago, or you can email us at psa.tnt at gmail.com. All right. I would really want us to always, as much as possible, keep in context the purpose for this whole program and to point out that there are certain activities taking place in the public service that is not in the interest of service delivery to the citizens of this country by public officers and it is not their fault but it appears to be a, a conspiracy to have all the systems that actually um, exist to make the public service work effectively that those systems collapse and by that i'm talking about and this is really in, on the basis of a recap, eh? since we've started our program, we have continually maintained our focus on the failure of the systems. And where the policymakers are concerned, we are saying that the behavior of the policymakers appeared to be heading in a direction to dismantle the public service. The way it is being ad achieved is by having the internal systems not function efficiently and effectively. The services are not operating in a manner that would cause issues like promotion, um, appointments, transfers, and these sort of issues to be settled uh, promptly. Even the service commission um, takes an inordinately long time to process and determine disciplinary matters. And that is a, a serious concern because it adds to the low morale of public officers. We also notice as well that there is an absence of any procedure for dealing with a grievance which arise as a result of anything else but discipline. Which, is, which happens at the service commission. So if you have a grievance for transfers, you can't take it anywhere. If you have a grievance for your appointment, where can you take it? If you have a grievance arising out of your promotion, where can you take it? But you know, if it, is, if it relates to discipline, there is the public service appeal board once a decision is made. Where the CPO is concerned, the CPO office is severely understaffed, oh my word, and is in dire need of, the officers are in dire need of training. The grievances from beginning to end 
seem to be uh, a situation of embarrassment to that office of the CPO because the, the machinery is not functioning. The classification of jobs in the public service appears to be a forgotten responsibility of the CPO. I want to remind you people that it is the responsibility of the CPO to keep under constant review the reclassification of all the jobs in the public service. And let's not even talk about the negotiations process because for the new collective agreement, new collective agreement period, that seems to have been totally forgotten. What is happening at the CPO is anybody's guess. And the PSA is saying, we are not happy with that situation. Another institution or agency of the, of the public service is the Ombudsman Office. The Ombudsman appears to be on a tangent of internal mischief against her staff in general, and including that of the executive officer. There is no peace and harmony existing at the Ombudsman Office. We have a 71-year-old incumbent uh, who seems to be interested mainly in matters that will show how much power exists in that, in that position and has been holding that position on contract for the last 11 years. When the law says that she's supposed to have the position on contract for five years, albeit that you are, you are able to run and get another appointment, but 11 years, something is wrong. And it leaves the permanent secretaries and the HR departments. And in my view, wrong. It is the view of the PSA that the permanent secretaries have taken a hands-off attitude towards the management of human resource matters and industrial relations matters in their ministries, leaving it up to the human resource directors and the HROs to exercise control, but not in keeping with the Public Service Commission regulations. In, in, in other words, they seem to be managing by VAPs and by whatever principles and guidelines that they pick up when they go to those private institutions, bringing back their degrees. But the public service is guided by regulations and rules that are made up specifically to make this organization, this one body called the public service, run efficiently and effectively. And those public those human resource persons are supposed to be guided by the Public Service Commission regulations. What we have observed, and comrades, um, I dare to say, um, is some kind of news. It may not be what we want, but it's good news anyway. Because I read in the newspaper today that, um, that there is some attention being paid to the fixing of the undue delays that are taking place in the controller of a conks division. And that is a good um, direction to start from. Albeit, we, so we are totally not in support of, 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 of the direction that, that the policy makers want to go. Yeah, we, 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 be, we definitely believe that the pension system needs to be fixed. But that, that is so. We know all why it is so right now. Because of lack of succession planning and proper training. Uh, not to mention the, the chronic short staff and the, in, the ineffectiveness of the service commission to fill vacancies. For whatever reason right what we have now is government having to depend on calling back contra um retired officers on contract to do pensions but in this article in the express i believe it is today they're saying that um again the minister is saying and reporting to parliament according to what the newspaper says here that um, based on the PMCDs, Public Management Consulting Division, 
the recommendation is to hire contract workers on one to three year contracts. You see, and here we go again. We're going down that road of contract employment in the public service again. To do government work. Again, do, the, 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 there's a pensions division that is lacking staff. Comrade, that is all. Comrade, you know the effect of this one to three year contract for con for um for these persons that they're bringing how will that impact on the the m m health plan well boy <laughs> they don't intend to staff the service with to fill the vacancies to cause public officers to have the kind of turnaround that comes when public officers retire that they have new blood coming into the system because when you're a permanent or when you are hired by the service commission the you you join the health plan as a compulsory um requirement and therefore your contribution is going to help to lift the the um the state of the of the plan by bringing in persons on contract you are going to starve the plan of resources which which is what is happening currently but additionally i fail to see how hiring contract employees would assist the um the whole pension system to be more effective because and if i am um if the newspaper is correct in quoting it says that um they would be given one to three year contracts to ensure you have a cadre of officers dedicated who will not be transferred or promoted and leaving the people's pension in abeyance. However, when someone is given a one-year contract or even a three-year contract, they need to be trained because pension and leave records are a specialized skill. And a lot of um, persons shy away from doing that function. But after you would have trained persons at the expiration of their contract, there is no guarantee those persons would be rehired. So every so often, training would be required, and by the time those persons develop that specialized skill, they are gone, and we will be in the same position that we are in now. You know how they plan to treat with that? By, by the establishment of a, of a manual, of a step-by-step -step manual, that anybody who comes into that particular department would only have to read the, man, the manual and they will pick up but from certainly there. Certainly that will, be, will not be as simple as it sounds because anybody, even if you read a manual, it, a lot goes into interpretation and your interpretation may not be the same as mine. So training is still required. What we need to have happen is to have the vacancies filled and have people in each ministry, statutory bodies, the Tobago House of Assembly, have persons there trained and specialized in doing pension and leave records and have succession planning. So you would always have an understudy who would be prepared as soon as that officer is qualified for a promotion because you don't want people being denied of promotions. Because you know, comrade, this this problem of succession planning which i don't know if these people were falling asleep on the job if these people in the service commissions department have been um vibrant enough but it has gone to the place where even in the ministry of energy they had to ask for the ps to be kept on for another year or so in order to have him um, to, to make use of his knowledge in the interest of the energy energy services in the country. And that tells you that there is poor planning in these areas. Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, it, ama it amazed me that the government itself came begging for this officer, right, to, to, to extend his, his time by one year past his retirement because they say nobody else nobody else in the public service all the other PSs and deputy PSs have nobody have the type of training he has in energy but why is it that if you all knew that is the, that is the, the um the challenge you have with that skill set why is it that that wasn't taken on board early enough so that one can have an understudy 
well in advance. Makes you feel as though his retirement dropped out the sky, eh? But then it goes back again to the HR functions. An effective and efficient HR department would have known that this person is due to retire in a year's time. And of course, things could have been put in place, but maybe it was intentional so that he would stay on. I am certain that there will be people who are qualified to fill that position. I heard them say in that article that they intend to, to maximize the iris system. The iris system should have been they should have been optimized to its fullest. Oh yes, that is uh, one piece of software that is grossly underutilized, under right? Uh, there's a number of fields in that IRIS um, program that isn't being uh, implemented or used at all, right? Um, it's not about getting any new um, IRIS human resource information system is about utilizing the one that they have right now properly optimizing the things so that public officers information from the time you take one day off and or 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 in accordance with the regulations if you take three days off or if you move from department a to department y that the iris system would would um have that recorded so that when the time come to um account for your absences or your movement within and around ministries but comrade please remember there are some the statutory bodies who are not under the iris system what then happens with those persons but they should be system? brought in they should be brought under the thing because remember it is one public service albeit they have them broken out into um what they call them state agencies um, pu um public enterprise or, or something like that the fact of the matter is they are answerable to a minister who answers to the parliament on their performance the only cut out there is the permanent secretary you know is only the ps so these boards they they ought to be able to plug the hr information into that iris system all across trinidad and tobago from the bureau of standards go right back down to whatever ministry that we work under because they all fall under ministries and therefore the accountability and will will be at the at their fingertips in return in in terms of human resource management issues which brings me to another point in the in, in the article where the minister saying that past issues include the creation and disbanding of ministries which led to public officers spending time chasing down records and they don't know where their records are is he is he serious is he really serious um who creates that problem who disbands ministries not public officers and who creates nine more ministries this 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 is the politicians they create that problem right and now you're saying it's yeah he, he said issues in past issues is he saying that we are not going to have the change in our ministries anymore and that we have a guarantee going forward that the ministries that exist now will exist for the rest of time in Trinidad and Tobago? We really need to get this public service once and for all fully organized without all these um, ups and downs that the public officers experience and how it impacts them when the time comes for accounting for their attendance at work and their the um interaction with the public the interaction with the public cannot go as well as they would like when there are issues that are personal to them that seem to not be redressed because the system is all over the place something is wrong and we are saying we are putting up a resistance
Yes, and comrades, listeners, Trinidad and Tobago, the Public Services Association is saying that public officers have been compelled to be part of a group health plan which exists in the public service for all monthly paid employees and yet every three years when the plan is to be reviewed there is always a problem with monies being paid into the plan with members of the plan when they draw on the plan when they go to the doctor to get um medical uh, services and they bring back their claims some of the claims take months months when the arrangement is within two weeks you should be getting your um your your benefit how long ago was this plan agreed to yes comrade drew this 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 is a plan that has been in existence since 2004 and i must say it's a good plan eh? it is a good, a good plan. plan for public officers because, because just recently they brought on family members on it oh yes right we, we the unions fought at a for persons to be able to bring their family on and we got through but the thing about this plan is that um, the civil servants their contribution is 40 percent of the premium while the government pays 60 percent of the premium since 2004 this is not an optional plan it is compulsory to all public officers and therefore it's part of your terms and conditions of service correct what what has happened in recent times is that for since 2004 i think this is the worst period ever oh yeah right persons taking up to almost a year in some instances to receive their claims and there's a perception out there that it's the PSA or I, I dare to say the tutor because PSA and the tutor is in this plan together um, are at fault in for, having the checks um, yeah. issued to, and, and yeah um, the PSA nor the, the tutor are insurance companies right but what has happened is the, the, the inflation the inflation the health inflation rate is so high in this country that the the service provider is telling us that these plans these group health plans are now reviewed every two years because of the, the rate uh, of, of the inflation in okay. the health sector mm -hmm. but that is not good enough because the actuaries would have done a study they would have done their groundwork before they would have um, come up with the, the rates that would be charged but let me just say this to you. I remember a couple of years ago, the um, health providers had a meeting at the Port of Spain City Hall with all liaison officers. And you all would know that in each ministry and department, persons were appointed as liaison officers to communicate with staff and the, the providers of the plan, which is M&M. &M. And one of the representatives of M&M &M said to the gathering of liaison officers that the monthly paid plan was in, in trouble and the daily paid plan was doing well and the reason he gave for that to our great dismay was that daily paid people would go to public institutions like the health centers and the emergency units and they would sit and wait for attention you mean having but to sit on scrub a bench yes but monthly paid people choose to go to their private doctors no is it that we are not as good as you know other people in society why do we have to dehumanize ourselves and sit in a health center for the entire day and then the public would complain of the absenteeism and all that but these are things that contribute to absenteeism and frustration at work that you must take a day or two to go and get free health care that may not be so efficient because when you go to a private doctor he certainly attends to you in a different manner than when you go to the health facilities. And we are paying our contributions. However, the employer apparently fails to live up to his agreement to pay his contribution of 60%.
But isn't that why you have insurance in the first place? Exactly. So that you don't question. have, you, yeah. so that you can get immediate um, health healthcare attention when you need it. And the best healthcare you would be seeking. Why would you subject yourself to, to that? Anybody who would have gone to a health center knows the terrible service that you get for the most part. But comrades, the policy makers, when they put this plan together, I have no beef for them. But when they put this plan together, they didn't envision public officers having to go and sit for extended hours on a bench to lose man hours of, of, of um, public service time having to get medical attention. Eh? Comrade, it's a, it's, it's a whole... There's 33,000 positions in the public service. 33,000. Right? Let's say all are filled... Um, once you have two years service, you're supposed to automatically come on to the plan, right? Uh, what has happened is that since the inception of this plan, a whole chunk of workers from the Ministry of Health that transferred to the RHS all were taken off the plan when they went across, right? So you find the plan shrinking, right? Vacancies are not being filled either, right? So we have 11,000 of them that that are, are, are not filled as we speak i tell you the service commission sleeping right. and it's part of a conspiracy so you have less less people contributing to the plan and what's worse is you have no new blood coming into the public service because contract, contract workers are not allowed to be on the plan so what we have is an aging public service and if you understand these um help plans there's a balance between the young people the middle-aged people and the old people on how the claim experiences young people tend to claim less right the older people claim more and if you have an aging public service now right with or, or the average age in the public service now is about 45 right everybody almost the entire public service ready to retire in a couple of years right and the service commission is not appointing new people the plan is dying but whose fault is that the, the institution, which has a constitutional mandate to fill vacancies in this country, has fell asleep on the job. Completely. And, that, and that, is not by, that is not by accident. Eh? That is not by accident. I genuinely believe, wrong, it is the view of the PSA that it is all part of a plan aimed at causing the public service to be so insecure, for civil servants to be so insecure in their employment that you wake up one morning and if i don't feel to keep you employed i don't have to go through the f the formalities associated with the service commission rules and regulations for separating a public officer from his employment but apart from that comrade i believe the the government is playing a game here to try to cause this plan to fail so that they could come out of this agreement, right? And have public officers face the, 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 the health sector out there, the private health sector out there, and have to pay their own way. But, but the PSA is saying no to that. You all have to pay up your part of this plan because this is part of our terms and conditions of employment and you need to fix it. But persons can be waiting a whole year to get a claim. That's it, nonsense. In addition to that, it is not. it ought not to be one or an arrangement where we go and meet in the with the management of the plan and try to negotiate how we go forward the unions and the employer and the service provider that should be a matter that we take up as part of the negotiations every three years and and uh, this i, I hear you brother and since 2015 the PSA, along with Chuta, has agreed to raise the premiums, right, so that the plan can perform efficiently. I think single coverage was to go up just by about $12, and the family coverage about $28, somewhere there. But since 2015, we're in 2017. They are aimed at destroying the public service by demoralizing public officers in all their rights and interest issues and 
nobody nobody is saying anything about it folks this is your time to call in public officers if you are grieved by this right uh, we, we need you to call in now and, let, and let's hear your side of the story it's you and i on psa right and the numbers are 622 9154 6223303 6310219 6390791 6390791 is in Tobago 6390791 Tobago Tobago let us hear your voice as well because you fall under this one this twin island state called trinidad and tobago let's hear your views as well and tobagonians are known for being vigorous in their views on issues that affect them so do not hide in the bushes and we are saying tell us about the plan well the plan would have originally have started in april 2004 and it covers all monthly paid officers in the civil service, the Tobago House of Assembly, and those statutory authorities that are subject to the statutory authorities at Chapter 24-1. Right? The plan, over time, they would have reviewed the plan and tried to improve it. So in 2012, we would have the inclusion of family as an optional benefit. However, the family coverage is not compulsory. There was an increase in the debt benefit from 20,000 to 50,000. And originally, the ratio of contributions employee to employer was 50 50. However, it is now um, 60 40. Employer pays 60%, the employee pays 40%. Right? And all persons, temporary or permanent, once you have two years continuous service, you are eligible to become a member of the plan by simply um, completing the card there's an enrollment card which you would complete and that is submitted to um, the m m department the psa facilitates the processing of the claims by being a receiving agency all we do is we receive the claims and forward it promptly to m m who and they have the responsibility of processing and preparing the checks the psa has no responsibility to pay any part of the contribution it's the employer paying 60 percent and the employee um, and that would have been deducted from your salary monthly and these um, payments are paid in advance so the the m m would process your claim and they would forward the checks to the different psa officers but you know i'm hearing that members come to the psa and members and non-members yes members and non-members coming to the PSC asking for their um claims and they are given checks that are still dated and those checks have to be returned to m m so that the member cannot go and cash the check they have to they now have to get the check revalidated and that is deliberate so in in effect no monies are being disbursed by the insurance company because after that check expires, you have to wait another um, unduly long period of time for it to be revalidated. There's no money in the account. Because the employer fails to pay his contribution. Right? So it will continue to be like that. I want Trinidad and Tobago to see the big picture here. It is about dismantling the public service by having the systems fail to function. And if they are functioning at all, the, the quality of the, the, the performance is such that it causes real concern for the, the aggrieved employee to the extent that some of them feel powerless. And when they come to the association for some kind of assistance and the association takes up their matters, these um these agencies at their highest levels they try to avoid meeting with the psa and it is in that context we have decided to bring it to you the listener you the public we will sway public opinion 
to get and embarrass them into doing their jobs properly because they were constitutionally established for that for that purpose precisely for that purpose uh, i i i don't like this situation at all right um persons actually when you, this is a plan where you have to spend your money first right and then receive whatever the the, the claims yes you, you get it back if you have an ongoing illness right and you need to get that money back to spend again right you, you you're not getting it right you have to wait an, an entire year and when you and when you do get the check it's stated that, that that's that, that's unacceptable really and this is a term and condition of employment and then the public service gets a bad you know everybody down on the public service the entire perception out there is the public public officer don't do this and they're lazy and they that and they we did get a call just now eh? but we lost it um caller you can call back if you choose to all right constructive criticism or anything that will help to strengthen the issues okay six two two nine one five four six two two three three zero three and in tobago six three nine zero seven nine one you and i on psc i wonder how is this arrangement with the controller of accounts going to work but let us go into that after this caller good morning caller welcome hello good morning good morning i have a claim in since the 21st of november last year and i cannot get back and i am waiting just as um just as you all said i am waiting on my money to do something else this is so ridiculous they're trying to frustrate us thank you it's a painful thing i hope you all would have heard the pain in the caller's voice because clearly she relied on a system that was put in place by these policy makers in order to ensure and to alleviate any kinds of um bureaucracy in um health care problems but comrade the 40 percent of that premium came out of the officer's salary already you know in advance right it, it, it is there's no you can't pull out you know this is compulsory but i tell you is it I, I, I smelling it you know mischief they're trying their best to mash up this plan you understand so that they wouldn't have to to pay their side i find it difficult to understand how human beings could treat trinidad and tobago citizens like this when we have a system that's supposed to be functioning so efficiently that when a public officer retires the next month and the regulations are so well built out the the um, pensions act is so well built out that the day the public officer retires he is supposed to be able to draw on his pension huh comrade how is it that those things are not working it's dysfunctional comrade a healthy workforce a healthy staff right would make for good production right when people are sick and don't have the the monies to treat with their health issues what what kind of service you expect to get from these employees and health is not only about the physical part of it what Certainly. about mentally when one would have used monies that they may have set aside for something important but you, you would have gone for medical attention assuming that within two to three weeks time because you would be insurance. reimbursed because you know that you would have paid what you were obligated to pay so you would be there and comrade i am sure you would remember we had a, a, a member whose husband has a terminal illness and they must import the drugs and she came pleading crying you oh you, boy that was a painful experience and, and plead on her behalf so that some sort of reimbursement so that she could purchase more drugs for her husband that was and sad. her husband was a, a public officer, a public officer as well who yes would have served for, two, uh, for how many years 40 years or so and that is the disrespect that he would have gotten at that stage of his life that is the state of affairs in the public service that we work in folks uh, 
we trying our best but this this government and and not just this government all governments i believe it's it's this conspiracy to dismantle public service they do, they're not sincere no they are saying that they want to fix the these issues but you notice with respect to this um this pension matter this pension matter was only um addressed in some form as a plaster and a saw as it were you know they didn't give it the kind of in-depth treatment expected because if it was they would not have come up with um this thing about contract work one year to three years in order to ensure that you have persons on the ground who know how to handle it because there are vacancies existing in the controller of accounts the department that need to be filled as well comrade right now nearly all the contract workers that working in the civil service right now they're on month to month we have a call on the line good morning hello good morning yes good morning, good morning and welcome yes comrade what I want to find out is um, how long this situation has been existing, you know, throughout its period, you know, of these various governments that we had in office. And, um, you know, if these contracts or these agreements were signed with, um, with, with legal bonds, bonding, so that you know, if somebody didn't keep their side of the bargain, that it would have some kind of a place to the autonomy where these arguments could be settled. And how powerful it is the industrial court, how powerful is the, is the judgment of the industrial court to bring about redress. And the other question I want to ask, based on the conversation is that I'm not hearing about, you know, any like research and development where you could have corrective practices to bring about change to certain, you know, discrepancies that have been that have been happening over that period of time where the public servants had to suffer because nobody is showing interest in their wealth, yes, it is. Okay, thanks, you know, Comrade. Thank you very much, Comrade. things that I am concerned about. As I said, I am not working in the public service anymore. All right. Yes, uh, and the problem transcends um, different administrations. It has nothing to do with politics, right? Uh, what it has to do is the management of, 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 of that plan and, and the government keeping up their side of the... Um, the obligation to pay their sixty percent on time and reviewing the plan timely. Okay, yeah, folks. I want. I, w I think we are. Um, we've come in close to that time, but um, com comrade, I genuinely hope we could be able to answer your questions in more detail the next day, coming when we tomorrow when we come back. But I want to also tell public officers where they can come and socialize um just remember the psa's rooftop is available for rental for any um, event you are having and you can contact us at 625-5478-623-54724 bookings have a Thank good you. day bye-bye Broadcasting from Trinidad to the world, the street at you fmcom Broadcasting from Trinidad to the world, the street at you fmcom